Good evening, this is your 28storms.com cyclone update for Thursday, the 1st of December. Since at least the 28th of November, we've been talking about the increased probability of a tropical cyclone developing somewhere within the Australian region, especially by mid-December. And one thing that I did overlook just two days ago was the weekly tropical climate note from the Bureau of Meteorology, and they are echoing the same concerns. Their latest quote is, it is likely that the MJO event will spawn the first tropical cyclone for the Australian cyclone season, and the Bureau of Meteorology will be monitoring the situation very closely. Furthermore, the western region is monitoring the Southeast Indian Ocean for the potential of tropical cyclone development. They do indicate that there is a low chance of formation by Sunday as an area of low pressure begins to form. The latest low-level vorticity analysis from the SIMS website is already indicating that a weak area of vorticity has formed over the west coast of Indonesia. And the latest precipitable water animation over the Indian Ocean over the last 72 hours confirms that we do have increasing convergence and low-level moisture just off the coastline. The latest infrared animation confirms that we do have increasing convection in that area but the water vapor also would seem to indicate that the upper level conditions are marginally favorable at the moment at best and that is due to quite a lot of moderate to strong easterly vertical wind shear on the south side of this powerful mid-level ridge currently located over the Bay of Bengal. However, there are indications that that mid-level ridge will begin to move more toward the west and therefore the stronger easterly winds to the south should begin to relax. Current wind shear values are very low just to the south and east of the tropical disturbance, but just toward the west, that is where we're seeing extreme wind shear values in excess of 50 to even 60 knots. But again, this wind shear should begin to move more toward the west along with this ridge as it begins to spread into the Arabian Sea. We will take a closer look at the future with the dynamical forecast models in just a moment, but I just wanted to point out that much of the tropics near Australia continue to be quiet other than some daily shower and thunderstorm activity across the Northern Territory and the coastal portions of Queensland. And although the monsoon trough remains active over the Solomon Islands, nothing is organizing into a tropical low at this time. As stated before, the enhancing phase of the Madden Julian Oscillation is continuing to spread over the central and eastern Indian Ocean. If you recall, within just the past week, the active pulse has already generated Tropical Cyclone 5A that formed near Sri Lanka before spreading into the Arabian Sea, and it looks fairly likely that we will have at least a second tropical cyclone form in the Indian Ocean from this pulse. And I could claim that that potential cyclone could cover my forecast of a tropical cyclone developing at least somewhat close to Australia by mid-December, which has been my call for at least the past half a week. But I would also still be willing to say that we very well could get an additional formation beyond that, whether it be near Australia or into the South Pacific before, say, approximately December 15th through December 20th. The GFS ensembles continue to favor this threat as they not only take the active pulse into the maritime continent and southern Pacific, but they also keep the phase rather active and intense. This is the latest 10-day forecast from the ECMWF model, and the first thing that you can key in on is the developing area of low pressure just off the coast of Indonesia, and it is forecast to steadily strengthen here, especially as we go into the medium range toward day 6 and day 7. We see it located well off the coast of Australia, well into the central Indian Ocean, and not posing much of a threat to anyone except for shipping interests, which is certainly some good news. So it's rather unlikely that Australia will be directly impacted by that system. And as we go into day 10, it is somewhat interesting to note that the model is trying to develop a weak area of low pressure in the Southern Coral Sea. However, it very well could be non-tropical in nature. The latest forecast from the GFS model is nearly identical to the ECMWF in that it's developing that cyclone in the southern hemisphere but keeping it well into the central Indian Ocean without impacting any land masses. In addition, we also see that second area of low pressure begin to develop in the Coral Sea as we go into day 7 and day 8, although it's very weak at this point. It's only down to about 1,010 to 1,012 millibars. And the 500 hectopascal height forecast for that same general time frame from the GFS model 
is indicating that an area of upper level cutoff low heights will be in that vicinity, which tells me that at least by 180 hours, this system is still cold core or non-tropical in nature, but it still has a slight chance to become at least partially tropical, meaning subtropical, as it begins to work toward the east-southeast. But the time that any area of low pressure would have to form into a completely tropical low would be somewhat limited. As you can see, based on the sea surface temperature profile, the system would only have roughly 24 to 48 hours before moving into cooler waters to the south of New Caledonia. So the tropics in the southern hemisphere are definitely beginning to heat up at least to some extent, but I don't foresee any tropical cyclone landfall threats, at least over the next five to seven days. So thank you for tuning in. We will have another video update at 28storms.com cyclone by tomorrow evening.